Thank you, Esther, for that introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God so much for this privilege to share his word to his people this afternoon. And as you could be aware, the theme for this week is pray without ceasing. On Monday, we looked at becoming prayerful. Yesterday, Tuesday, we looked at praying the word. And today, Wednesday, we are looking at praying by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father Almighty, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you for the opportunity to hear your word. For Lord God, you have said in your word that your word is there to teach us, to correct us, to train us in righteousness so that we may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Lord, use me as your vessel. Empty me of everything that is not of you and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Yes, friends, before I begin this sharing on this topic, praying by the Holy Spirit, allow me to blow this chauffeur. <laughs> Amen, amen. So we are going to share on the topic, praying by the Holy Spirit. I want to first of all talk about the three kinds of people that exist. And these three kinds of people, one, the first one is the natural man. The natural man does not have Christ in his life. According to 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says that the man without the spirit of God does not accept the things that come, the things that come from the spirit of God for their foolishness to him and he cannot understand them. Then secondly, we have what we call a freshly or carnal or worldly man. Christ is in the life of this man, but he does not have full control of his life. And we read that in 1 Corinthians 3, as I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ, I gave not solid food, for you are not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready for for you are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Then the third man is the spiritual man. The spiritual man is a man who has accepted Christ in his life or in her life, and the Holy Spirit is in full control of that man. And 1 Corinthians 2, 15 and 16 talks about that man. It says, the spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of Christ that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Friends, praying by the Holy Spirit means the Holy Spirit is directing your prayer or praying through you. The first two people, the natural man and the freshly or carnal man, cannot pray by the Holy Spirit. The prerequisite for praying by the Holy Spirit, friends, is being filled by the Holy Spirit. And how are we filled? by the Holy Spirit, through prayer, by asking the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. As Ephesians chapter 5, 18 tells us that do not get drunk with wine, which will ruin you, but be filled with the Spirit. Friends, this is a command and should be obeyed. 
just as wine controls the person and starts walking staggering so even when you are filled by the holy spirit or filled with the holy spirit he is in full control of your life the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness humility self-control are evident in a person's life in increasing measure as you yield to the holy spirit therefore friends if you are to be filled with your holy spirit there is need to confess your sins and then after confessing your sins ask the holy spirit to fill you romans 8 14 paul describes our need of the holy spirit's guidance to lead the christian life let me read this scriptures yes this scripture it says for all who are being led by the spirit of god these are sons of god for all those who are being led by the spirit of god these are the sons of god john 1 12 says to all who received him who believed in his name he gave them the right to become children of god and that passage also that we have read it talks about how the holy spirit is the only one who can guide us in prayer romans 8 26 and in the same way the spirit also helps our weaknesses for we do not know how to pray as we should but the spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words and he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of god friends we do not know how to pray so we need the holy spirit to teach us and guide us in our prayers there are four ways friends in which the holy spirit helps us or helps a believer to pray from that scripture that we have read in in romans 8 the first way that the holy spirit helps a believer in prayer is interceding for us the scriptures interceding for us with groanings too deep for words friends this is intercession which is one of the responsibilities of a christian intercession means to stand in the gap for someone and in the bible we read of many people who stood in the gap and in the book of ezekiel he says i look for a man to stand in the gap so that i do not destroy the city but i couldn't find any why because he was looking at the men and women and there was no one who was spirit filled there is also this statement in that verse, groaning so deep for words. This one means that our finite mind, our finite limited minds do not have the words to pray. What needs to be prayed? Therefore, one of the words the Holy Spirit comes to our, to our help is to pray through us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words friends this is a very sacred experience it is a spiritual travel that leads to spiritual birth as we read in isaiah 66 verse 8 it says that as soon as zion traveled she also brought forth her sons it's a prayer that birthes things Derek Prince, in his book, Life-Changing Spiritual Power, has said, no real spiritual reproduction in the church can occur without spiritual travel in prayer. I repeat, no real spiritual reproduction in the church can occur without spiritual travel in prayer. Friends, this can only be done by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts men and women to repent. And in the Bible, there are so many examples of people who really traveled and souls were won to the Lord and God had them from on high. One of the examples is Paul. He traveled in prayer. When you read his epistles, you really see him traveling in prayer. Actually, in Galatians 4, 19, he says, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Paul's focus was for people to come to know Christ and not only to know Christ, but to know him deeply. So this scripture in, in Galatians 4.19 talks, describes intercessory prayer. Another way the Holy Spirit helps us in prayer is that he illuminates our minds. This means the Holy Spirit shows us in our minds what we need to pray for and how we need to pray for it. I repeat what we need to pray for and how we need to pray for it. And two passages in the epistle of Paul talk about this mind renewal. One is in Romans chapter 12, verse two, which says that, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Yes, if we are led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will help us to renew our minds. And when the Spirit of God renews our minds, then we shall pray accordingly, according to God's will. And God's will in that scripture is good. God's will is acceptable and God's will is perfect. And every Christian should aim at, the, at this, praying for God's will to be done in his life or in her life. All prayed for the Ephesians in chapter four, verse 23. He says, that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Friends, when the Holy Spirit moves and renews our minds, then we begin to understand the will of God. In this way, the Holy Spirit helps us by renewing our minds, illuminating them, and revealing to us how to pray. Friends, the Holy Spirit helps us in prayer by illuminating our minds. I've had many people come to me and ask me to pray for them. I want to get married. Please pray for me. And one of the things I always ask them, what kind of man, what kind of woman does your heart desire? And at, at some people do not even have that in their minds. But the Holy Spirit shows us the mind of God. Number three, the third way in which the Holy Spirit helps us is that he puts the right words in our mouth. He puts the right our mouth. If we are spirit-filled, as we pray, the Holy Spirit puts the right words in our mouth. He can remind you of a scripture or give you just a statement to say. When we read the epistle of Paul to the Ephesians, we see him really praying, being led by the Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 15, verse 17, he says, For this reason, Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that 
the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Friends, if we know God better, then that's when we can even serve him better. So how do you pray for the brethren? Paul prayed that they should, God should give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. You and me, friends, you need to, do, to know God better. At times we don't know God, even when we read the Bible, but the Holy Spirit can enable us to know God better. Number four, the fourth way the Holy Spirit helps us in prayer is by giving us an unknown tongue. Giving us an unknown tongue. One that the natural mind does not know. An unknown tongue. We read that in Acts chapter 2 when the, the apostles, when the disciples had been gathering for 10, 10 days, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they started speaking unknown tongues. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, it says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man, but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. Friends, tongues is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is used when one is praying. Some people, however, think that praying in the spirit means praying in tongues. But I only believe that one can pray in the spirit without necessarily praying in tongues. Therefore, those are the four ways that the Holy Spirit can help us in prayer. If you are to pray by the Holy Spirit, so friends, as I conclude my sharing this afternoon, I want you to understand that if you are to pray by the Spirit, first and foremost, you must be a believer. You, you must have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Secondly, you must be a Christian who confesses his sin or her sin, moment by moment. Psalm 66 verse 18 says, if I cherish sin in my heart, the Lord will not listen to my prayer. Thirdly, you must be a Christian who is spirit-filled and spirit-led. You need to depend upon the Holy Spirit for without him, indeed, you cannot do anything. Friend, someone has said that the key to effective praying is learning how to be so related to the Holy Spirit that you can submit to him. Are you related? Are you so related to the Holy Spirit that you are always submitting to him? Lastly, friends, fasting in the Bible, in the entire Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, is always associated with praying by the Spirit. For example, in Matthew 4.1, it says that when Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, he fasted and prayed for 40, 40 days. And the early church also fasted and prayed Acts 13 2 says, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Friends, fasting is very, very key in prayer. And one of the greatest intercessors in history. He's a man called E.M. Bounds. 
heard this to say that if our prayers are not according to the will of God, they die in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I want to repeat, if our prayers are not according to the will of God, they die in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So my dear brothers and sisters, may the Lord help you and me to pray by the Holy Spirit, for that is when our prayers are very much, as we read in James 5, 16, that the prayers of a righteous man are very much. There is a man by the name of Billy Bright. He is the founder of Life Ministry or Campus Crusade for Christ. Billy Bright went to be with the Lord a few years ago. But he wrote a certain book, and in his book, entitled A Mark That Is Difficult to Erase, talks of a student revival which happened at Harvard University in December 1802. And he said that this revival started as a result of seven students who committed themselves to prayer every Saturday evening. Billy Bright says that what characterized these, these, the, the prayers of these seven students were four things. One, that the students asked the Holy Spirit, every time they would meet, ask the Holy Spirit to point out any unconfessed sin in their lives, whether attitudes or actions. Secondly, that every day, time they met, they claimed the forgiveness that was theirs through Christ's death on the cross for them. As we read in John 1, 9, 1 John 1, 9, if you confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous, forgive us our sins. Then number three, that if restitution was appropriate, they took time to reconcile any differences they had with others. As Matthew 5 says, Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Number four that characterized their prayer was, by faith they experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit. As they claimed this scripture, do not Ephesians 5 18 do not get drunk with wine which will ruin you but be filled with the Holy Spirit number five they believed God to supernaturally fulfill his promises in their lives and in the world and through that intercession friends there was a great revival in Harvard University so how has been your prayer life have you been praying being led by the spirit have you been praying by the spirit of god so may the lord help me help you to ensure that in our prayers we pray by the holy spirit let us pray father almighty i give you thanks and praise thank you lord god for this word and heavenly father I pray for every person that has been listening to this word, that this word will bear fruit in his or in her life, and th those fruits will abide. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.